Hey everyone, this is Nick and KD Plasma 5.26 will be released tomorrow. And there is nothing head turning in this release. It's a lot of changes, but a lot of them are small changes. So it's basically in keeping with the release cycle of KDE Plasma. One version for major features and one version for polish. Still, this version will still majorly improve the experience you can have with KDE. So let's take a look at the changes and let's take a look at today's sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games. For example, Focal Board. If you don't know about it, it's an open source alternative to tools like Trello, Asana, or Notion. It lets you create milestones, keep track of your nodes, have a bird's eye view of your projects, and it basically helps you get stuff done. And you can deploy your focal board server in one click from your Linode dashboard, something I should probably do to ensure that I keep delivering my videos on time. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. Okay, so I lied. There is one major feature making its way into this release, but it's not one that's gonna be useful for the majority of KDE users. And it's called Plasma Big Screen. This thing is meant to bring KDE to your TV. And it's not just a revamp of the default KDE desktop. It's a whole new interface made to be used on a TV. Hence the name Big Screen. Crazy, I know. Unfortunately, I do not own any device that is able to run it. Supposedly, you can create an image for the Pine Phone, and I did, but it just wouldn't boot. It is designed to run on ARM-based devices for now. There are no builds for x86 devices, at least none that I could find. Now, what's important to know about Big Screen is that it's been in development for a while now. It's been officially announced two years ago. And Plasma 5.26 is just the version that gives it its first stable release. Big Screen is controlled through your TV remote directly with the CEC protocol and is designed with a big launcher to let you run apps optimized for your TV. It also integrates Minecraft to control the interface with your voice and uses Minecraft skills to enrich the experience. By default, it comes with the Aura web browser and the Plank player to play local media files, but you can install a lot more, including shortcuts to YouTube, Peertube, SoundCloud, Deezer, and more. And look, it's no competitor to your current smart TV, smart stick, set-top box, or whatever you use, because it basically has no apps for any of the streaming services that you might want to use. Some of them might work in the browser, assuming their DRM are also functional, but generally it's just a first step. And if you're more a I play my files locally type of guy, then I guess it can do the trick. Now, on two things that most people will actually benefit from. The desktop has seen a few changes that should make it even more customizable. First, all the little pop-ups from the plasmoids you embed in your panels they are now resizable. From the kickoff menu to the Wi-Fi applet to the sound, you can change all their sizes and they will remember it as well so you don't have to make them bigger every time you want to use them. The kickoff menu also has a few usability changes. First, it has a compact mode that you can enable from the applet settings with the Use Compact List Item Style checkbox. The change basically just reduces the icon height and removes the description line under each app name in the list, so you save some space if your display is tiny. In that same list, you can now click on a letter to get a selector that lets you jump to one letter specifically on the list. It's handy if you have a ton of applications installed and you don't feel like scrolling for ages to find the one you want. Although at that point, if you already know the letter you want to get to, you might as well type it on your keyboard unless you don't have a keyboard, so I guess this feature is mostly useful for touchscreens. On horizontal panels, you can now also add a label to the applications menu that will appear after the icon. So you could imagine writing something crazy like start, for example. That would be pretty innovative. 
And also you can decide to remove the icon by clicking it in the Preferences panel for the launcher and selecting Remove Icon. And if you like to try out alternative launchers and widgets using the Show Alternatives right-click option, you can now do so without risking to lose all your configs because the Plasmoid settings are now saved. So if you revert to the previous widget you used before, you will still keep all your configurations. Rising fans will probably absolutely love this change because it was extremely annoying. Now bring the same option for panels that you removed or deleted because that's also extremely annoying. The calendar widget can now also display dates from different calendars. So for example, you could see dates from the Chinese lunar calendar, Indian national calendar or Islamic civil calendar. The media controller widget that you can add to the panel will also be able to display the title, the artist and the album art of the currently playing track. And it looks pretty good. In terms of look and feel, Breeze has been tweaked, but very, very slightly. With inactive tabs being now a bit less dark when using dark mode and keyboard shortcuts using a lighter color in context menus. Buttons and combo boxes now also won't use a gradient which makes them look flatter and honestly better. When using the accent color from the wallpapers, KDE will now grab the most dominant color instead of something that looked like an average of a few colors and often resulted in some kind of brown or gray. Now, in terms of effects, there's a small change, but it should definitely improve the cohesiveness of the Plasma desktop. The cover switch and flip switch methods for alt tabbing will now use the same background as the overview mode with a blurred frosted wallpaper behind them which should unify everything a bit better. And speaking of the overview, you can now search in it to filter windows by title. If nothing matches, it will still launch a K-Runner search so you're not losing any functionality here. There's also a nice improvement to how Plasma handles wallpapers. First, you can preview them now by just clicking on them in the wallpaper settings panel. You will still need to click apply to actually change it, but at least that's one less click to preview. Plasma also now handles wallpapers using different images, one for light mode and one for dark mode, just like what GNOME offers, for example. And you can now use animated images as wallpapers as well, either on their own or as part as a slideshow. So, like I said, nothing groundbreaking, but plenty of small and very nice usability changes. And a bit more settings and options, because it's KDE, of course you're gonna need more settings and options. Now let's move on to the system settings. First is the ability to rebind the mouse buttons. Plasma 5.26 now lets you change the action of each of your mouse's buttons, straight from the system settings. You can map them to various keystrokes or to keyboard shortcuts like Alt-Tab, Super plus W to open the overview and more. It's a good feature to have, especially if, like me, you have a mouse with extra buttons that you never bothered to configure. Hey, if there is no graphical tool, I'm not about to start messing with a weird config file somewhere that I always forget exists to try and map some inputs to a key code. No way, no, no. The other big change is for Wayland, specifically scaling on Wayland. If you used it before, you will have noticed that most X Wayland apps looked blurry when using the scaling feature because their entire window was scaled by the compositor, not by the toolkit. Well, now you have the option to choose how things are scaled. You can let the compositor scale everything as before and a small warning will tell you that X11 apps will look blurry Although they call it legacy apps, which is sure to make Wayland detractors pretty angry. Although, in all fairness, Wayland detractors will probably never see that tooltip because it's only on Wayland. Or you can choose to let Windows scale themselves. And the ones that do support X11 high DPI scaling will use it, but the ones that don't, won't and will stay very tiny. You also get a lot more options in the night color settings, the feature that lets you change the color tint of the display to limit blue light emissions. First, you can now choose a manual location to enable the feature and KDE will use this time zone to automatically change the color. And you can now set two different colors, one for the day and one for the night. So you can have the feature enabled all the time, but with a lighter tint during the day and a darker one at night. Leave it to KDE to make a night color feature into an 
all day color if you want it maybe feature. Now I joke but it's actually quite clever to have these two settings. If you usually mess with the system's formats and languages, you will know that it was pretty easy to break things when using the two different settings pages that existed before. Well, it is now fixed as they both have merged into one single page, so you can set everything in one place and not risk having conflicting settings. Another small improvement is in the login script section of the auto start settings. If you add a manual script file that you want to run at your session startup, Plasma will now check whether the script is executable or not and it will let you make it executable by the click of a button. You also get a little bit more information in the show more info panel of the about this system settings page with more precise device identification, more precise model names, including recent Apple Silicon Macs. And for Wayland users, it's now possible to disable middle click to paste and you can also better map your drawing tablet's area to the coordinates on the screen. Now let's move on to what's new in Discover. Discover will now let you change the frequency of update notifications. You can choose to have these notifications that remind you to update your system either daily, weekly, monthly or never. Now weirdly this setting is not inside of Discover itself, but Discover merely links to it. You have to click on the settings tab of Discover, then the three dot menu, click configure updates and this will bring you to the software update settings page of the main settings app. Pretty typically convoluted. Like seriously, just put this settings page inside of Discover and just, you have the space in the header, just display the button. Why hide it behind a three dot menu, really? There's also a new message box when viewing a beta app whose version is lower than the stable version to avoid users installing old betas when they think they're getting the latest and greatest. And when you're just viewing a beta version of an app in Discover, you will also get a message box to let you know that this is the case. This is a beta version. It's not going to be stable. On app pages, you also get a share button that will let you share the application with someone else. This share button lets you send the link to the app either with a QR code, an email, you can send it directly to a device via an SMS through KDE Connect, or you can share it on Twitter. The link is an app stream one which should be openable on most graphical app stores for Linux. You will also be able to see content ratings for apps that have them. You can also change the name you will use to leave a review of an app and Discover will now check to see if there's enough free space on disk before updating. And that's it. And that's quite a lot of stuff. It's mostly small changes. There's nothing revolutionary. But this also doesn't highlight the enormous number of bug fixes and improvements that you will never notice, but that should make your KDE experience a lot smoother. So obviously, when your distro offers you to upgrade, jump on the opportunity and click that update button. It's a polish and bug fix release and there is absolutely no reason to pass up on it if you can get it. Just like there is no reason to pass up on today's sponsor. Taxido is a company that's based in Germany and that ships worldwide a huge range of Linux laptops and Linux desktops. Now, why would you want to buy a device with Linux pre-installed instead of any other device on the market? Well, because when you buy from Tuxedo, you know that the device is fully compatible with Linux with basically every single distro, which is absolutely not the case if you have ever bought a Windows laptop and tried to install Linux on it. There is still a lot of work to do to check if components are compatible beforehand and to try and find the drivers if you bought it without checking. It's not a plug and play experience, contrary to what Tuxedo offers. So yeah, that's the main reason. And also they have devices for all price points. They have customization options galore, including your own custom keyboard layout if you prefer. And you also have the opportunity to have your own logo on the lid of the laptop. You can change the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, the SSD. They're basically tailor-made, which is probably why they call it Tuxedo. So whether you need a small, affordable Ultrabook or a super powerful workstation, whether it's a desktop or, or a gaming laptop, Tuxedo has it and you can configure it to your heart's content. So check the link in the description below and click it and just stop worrying about what's compatible, what's not, and is that model a good fit? They're all good fits down here.
So, thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, and if you didn't like the video, well you can dislike it, and also tell me why down there in the comments. And if you want to support the channel and help me make more of these videos, you can, just click the super thanks button or the PayPal link in the description, or the Patreon or YouTube membership links in the description as well. Both of these get access to a weekly podcast on Monday where I talk about Linux, open source applications, the channel, personal experiences, a lot of interesting stuff, at least I think it's interesting. And you also get to vote on the topics that I'll cover in the next month. So if you're interested by that, all the links are down there. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!